can see that the area of effectiveness is greatly increased. Quick example from my life, before I learned about leadership sensibly, I used to try to do everything on my own, thinking, oh, I can do it better than anyone else, I'm going to do it. Until I began to realize I needed to apply the law of priorities. I needed to prioritize. And one of the things that John says is, if you find someone who can do anything 80% as good as you, let them do it. Grow them, mentor them into this role. So I began to realize I cannot write all the books I want to write and edit all the books and do everything and do all the illustrations. I began to realize that leadership was influence. Leadership is building a team. So I began to build a team to help me with my book writing and my training and my coaching. At the end of the day, I went from writing zero books before I met John to writing over 12 books within a span of three years. How did I do it? I realized that I needed to lead better. I needed to lead myself better. Sometimes leading yourself better means making yourself do things that you don't want to do, all in a bid to help. So that's really what this law is about. Once you understand leadership principles, the, the power of a team, the importance of adding value to people, once you intentionally learn leadership and you apply those skills, I'm telling you, the payoff will be absolutely enormous. You know, we as PMs, a lot of times we like to be in our cubicle cranking out those figures or cranking out those reports. But in the world of leadership, it's really more about the interaction of people and helping people come aboard and getting allies to help you. That's really what it's about. So the greater your ability to lead, the higher the lead on your potential. What are some of the leadership challenges that people face? Vision casting. You mentioned vision, the ability to cast a vision. That could be a challenge. How about building a team? Someone said project management is like herding cats. Uniting and aligning people with diverse visions and ethics and goals. How do you get all those people together? How do you align them? That's leadership. How to get the right people on the right bus? How about getting the wrong people off the bus? You know what that means. How about setting people in the right seats? Because you've got a whole team. Not everyone does the same thing. And lastly, get the bus in the right direction. It takes a leader to do a lot of that. How about this story about two guys called Dick and Maurice? You probably heard this story. In 1929, they left New Hampshire for California in search of the American dream. And they had high hopes. And they eventually set up a theater. But they ended up not liking the, the life of the theater too much. Their first job was at stagehands, and they were in the movie business. But four years later, they still hadn't turned a profit. So they decided, why don't we set up a hot dog stand? So they went to San Bernardino, and they set up a hot dog stand, and they started introducing other things. Within five years, they were making 200K. Can you imagine in the 1930s, making 200,000 in 1930-something? That's a lot of money. Dick and his wife lived in a 25-room mansion with a view way back then. These guys were making a lot of money. They had 350K in revenues. With annual profits of more than 100K, they were content. They were in the town's financial elite. And the rest is history, right? Wrong. The people I'm talking about, you know them. They're the McDonald's brothers. But the only reason why you know them today is not because of their great leadership. It's because of the leadership ability of someone else. So let's explore these guys a little bit. Why could these guys not rise higher than small restaurant owners? You're probably saying, oh, they did. We know McDonald's today. Not because of these guys. Not because of them. They couldn't rise in small restaurant owners. Why? They had a weak leadership mindset. They had a lid on the ability to succeed. They set up a few McDonald's, but they couldn't go any further than that. They came up with a great idea, folks. Great idea. I don't know how many of you have come up with a great idea, and I've seen the idea like a few months later, and like, hey, that's my idea. Someone decided to lead the idea a little bit better. They were more intentional. Someone decided to take it to a whole new level. You've probably heard the story of MySpace. I was on MySpace. I'm not really on MySpace anymore. Where's everyone? Facebook. Who's leading social media, Twitter, YouTube? People who came along after. 
What about Tim Berners-Lee? Do you know who Tim Berners-Lee is? Who is he? Creator of the internet. Thank you. Tim Berners-Lee created the internet. But look at who's leading social media today. You look at the Googles of this world. You look at the Twitters. So it's not really about having a great idea. These guys had a great idea. They could not make a promising business more effective. Now, this guy here, his name's Ray Kroc. How many of you guys have heard this story about Ray Kroc? You have, good. Ray Kroc, he acted just like a croc. He came in in stealth mode and said, oh, I hear that you guys have got this franchising thing going on. I'm interested in it. But before he posed that to them, he said, I have milkshake machines I want to sell. And they said, well, we don't have enough McDonald's to sell for you to sell us so many milkshake machines. And he said, well, if you have more McDonald's, then I can sell more milkshake machines. So he started convincing them to franchise with him. So he ended up getting the franchising rights. And before you knew it, folks, Ray Kroc was running the entire show. He had taken over. He basically drove the brothers out of town. He was such a bad guy, bad in that sense, in good sense, that they wrote a song about him. The Dire Straits wrote a song about Ray Kroc because he's such, he's such a, a great leader. They turned over the franchising rights to this guy. At the end of the day, they cried uncle and ran out of town. And this guy, he gave up a lot. That's one thing about leadership. You have to give up a lot. He gave up his golf game. He gave up where he lived. He spent a lot of money investing in people. How many of you guys invest in people like weekly in an intentional fashion? I know some people do. There you go. To, to actually say, I'm going to invest in these folks to build a team that can achieve a goal for the company. That's pretty much what he did. So he ended up investing so much money, drove the brothers out of town. Or they had to pack up and go with their Cadillacs and so on. And Unfortunately, the lack of leadership ability was the lid on these McDonald's brothers' level of effectiveness. Who are these two guys? You know them? Steve Jobs. Thank you. And Wozniak. We know these guys. Wozniak was the brain. He was the brain behind the brain. Once upon a time before they became who they finally did, Wozniak he used to be a bit of a mischievous guy. So he ended up creating a device called the Blue Box. Back in those days, there were no digital phones. Hacking into phone lines was a big deal. So he created something called the Blue Box that will enable you dial a number in the US for free, any number, way back in the 70s. Can you imagine that? So he came up with this device, and Jobs said, oh, this is really cool. You know, him being the marketing guy he is. Why don't we sell it? So they end up trying to tout this thing around. They go into a bar. They find some guys and they say, hey, we've got this device. You can call any number for free, trunk calls for free, all day for the rest of your life. And they said, OK, let's go test it. So they go to a phone booth and they plug it in. And Wozniak does his magic. And they call a number. And the number was a little bit off. It wasn't exactly the number they called, but it was a long distance call. And the guys were pretty impressed. And they said, all right, follow us. Uh, let's go back to our car. We're going to give you some money for this, $500 or however much they asked for. So the guy get, gets into his car, opens up the glove compartment, and out comes a gun. And he says to Jobs, who's holding the blue box, hand it over, brother. And Jobs is shivering, and he hands it over very slowly to the guy. And off the guys go, and Wozniak is freaked out of his mind. And he's like, I never want to do that again. That was crazy. And Jobs says, are you crazy? People want to kill for your product. Let's do this again. And that's how they ended up setting up Apple, and the rest is history. It was him who motivated the brain behind the products to actually go a step further. So a lot of times, being the first person to come out with the idea is not necessarily being a leader. It's what you do with the idea, isn't it? 